All right, Odalon, it's all yours. Take it away. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Pope RPMs, the version of this year. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Uh, I am Odalon. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I'm still working with RPM packaging. Been doing this for the past three years already. And my mainly packages are Pope but from time to time and they're on Catello and Forma as well, and that translates to satellite. Uh, let's do a recap on the year that we had. Uh, last year I did this talk and my main point was that we would need a lot of automation. So if we could be on the same pace as Pope is on developing new features and onboarding new features as soon as possible. And the automation start with Dependabot. Now we have a Dependabot running in the packaging side, like we have a file there that is a requirements.txt that Dependabot manages and he does his magic there, keeping up the packages daily. Uh, we have auto packaging right now. When Dependabot creates the PR, we go there, merge, and the packaging is done on in an action, and that's create a new PR. We merge and we have the RPM done. We just need to make sure that the new dependency, if added, we need to review, but that's part of the process of RPM packaging. We don't auto merge anything on RPMs because we don't want to be the one breaking the supply chain. Uh, we have dependency resolution right now in PRs because let's use poop glue and poop glue dab as example from time to time poop glue releases too fast and glue dab does not and glue dabs break the support and we need to catch that before merging because there's no point of merging a new bump if there's no support there uh, and the last is we have a new auto bump workflow uh, what this does it will install pulp using the file that we have the using pipe, I'm not using UV yet or poetry. Please provide a S bone for us so I can install what you guys do on build. Uh, then we do all the packages that are installed there and compare with our spec files. And from there, we run another automation that updates magically the files to us. So, what we have right now, we have Nightly, that is based on the last version that Catello wants. It's not the last version of Pope. We could do that, but we are not doing that. Uh, we have 3.49. 3.621 was there for three weeks, I believe. Then we had to do some bindings and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. And 3.63 was released. So right now we have 3.49 and 3.63. How are our timeline right now? We have two active versions that are released. That is 3.63 and 3.49. We have nightly that is managed by the Panda bot. At some point on the next year, maybe on January or February, I'm going to add the Panda bot to 3.49 because I'm not managing that. And I hope that automation can help me at least making sure that the Pope bits are up to date on upstream. Um, right now, we decided to drop EL8 because Foreman and Catello dropped EL8 support. So we are only building on EL9 until EL10 release next year. So we are going to go there and build for EL10 as well, because why not? We need to catch stuff before it breaks. Here I have a little timeline. Um, I know it's small. Blame Node.js because it does not scale with my screen. Here I have Nightly on the first level. Then I have Pope 3.49. And you can see the support ended here, where my mouse is. Uh, and here, let me see what. Yeah, here is 3.39 that we just removed. Here is 3.49 that is still going. It's active because we still have versions of Catello that are using it. Here we have 3.61, that is three weeks. 
and from here we are on the 363 pace so our plan is to always have at maximum two versions of pulp being supported and packaged we did in the past like with five or six and that's chaos and we don't want chaos anymore and how we are building these days uh we support setup tools poetry this one is new metering and uh, it comes from python cryptography and it's yet another rust build tool for python it does need to stop at some point we have fleet and we have hatch so we can upgrade to packages to new versions and if they're going to the pyproject.tom how we can go there and just switch the macros and build using the new build system and that's good because we are now only on neo 9 and we can support new features from the rpm on neo 9 and soon to be l10 and what we have right now we have only python 3.11 uh, we are going to rebuild for 3.12 when you know 8 real 10 comes out but until then we are going to just start to do a resync in our spec files to make sure that this rebuild is not as painful as when we move it to el9 like to go to python 3.9 at the time it was really complicated uh what we have now we have a bi-weekly run of all the builds that we have that pope uses so we are now catching outages and breaks really soon like this week we got django rest framework uh it's a lib that you guys use and the last version that is on pypy is broken like they're shipping a django mock example inside of the lib so if someone wants to run a django inside of django rest framework you can run a project because they forget to delete on build system at build time so we need to go back one version and we caught that because the spec file saw that hey there's a file here that's not described and what should i do uh we are moving from setup.py as much as we can if there's a tonal file there i'm going for the new build system i'm not holding setup.py anymore and this is how fast can we go now uh let's say we had a release uh on october 30 we had pope 3.63.1 released and here is uc time uh, it's not brazilian time uh, at 3 p.m we had the release on pypy uh the pendabot was running ad hoc by me two hours later and the pr was created the PR for the RPM was created seven minutes before uh, later because we had to run the scratch and do if it's working or not. Uh, after the package was done, we released it. Uh, it was 20 minutes later. We had the RPM ready to be consumed. So that's how fast we are moving. And if I was with not doing other stuff, it would be way faster. But if I did nothing on the other day when I got back to work, I would have a dependabot PR, I would merge, do the packaging and release. So this dependabot run could be can be ignored. But since we needed to test on Cotello, the latest version of Cotello, we decided to go ad hoc at the time. Any questions, concerns? So, moving fast, uh, what we have now? We have an auto update. So it installs from this file here. Let me open. This is the nightly one that we have. So the workflow will do a pip install on this file. This is the version that we are supporting right now on Cotello and it will see what's packaged there so it will get all the big packages let me go here in actions i like to show what we do it's this one it will do the installation 
and later it will save a file for me that is the full list of packages. This full list of packages are all the packages that Pope we're going to use to run. And then I do a diff, if my browser allows me to scroll back. And here I only have the packages to update. So the packages that I need right now that are out of sync is Brasex, Certify, Django, and there's packages here. And if you take a look, we had on the first on the first run that we did, I believe we updated more than 100 packages. So right now we are really close to upstream in the dependency that you guys are using. And yeah, it is. And we updated 150 packages. And the merge date was September 10. So we are not even on three months of this automation running. And this is how it looks. Uh, we have GitHub Actions open in the PR. I go there and review if there is nothing to do. Um, just merge. I take a look on, hey, there's a new lib being imported here or not. Uh, it's just a fix. Sometimes it's just a CI bump. But I don't want to be on the, if I have a CI update, I do the CI update anyway. And now we have, as well as I mentioned before, the dependabot to do the branch for us and do the update for us on dependencies. It runs daily or ad hoc, so we can go there and trigger the dependabot run. If you guys say, hey, there's a new lib here, and I know if that Ian is waiting on nightly, I go there and package for him. Uh, it will create a new PR for us, and after the merge, it will bump the spec file. And this is something that we had to do on the Right, uh, we had to group the pub CLI versions like glue and CLI or CLI, I don't know how you call it. Uh, and we had to do the pub CLI dab as well to make sure that the bump is on the same PR because if not, it's going to fail on the dependency resolution because it's say, hey, my CLI version needs another version of glue and we don't want to deal with that. Another thing that we had to do, and we want to make sure that it's declared in the file, is make sure that the only updates the minor version of PopCore, PopRPM, PopOS3, all the libs here. Because if you guys release PopCore 364, or 366, I'm not, I don't remember the version that it's released now, it would go there and bump, and that breaks Catello, and Catello folks will be mad at me if I break Catello all the time, that there's a new release is there. So we want to make sure that we are only update the Z version. When you need to branch to a new version, I'll be there updating, and then Dependabot will take over the resolution. And here, uh, we are going to the final part of the presentation, and I have some cool stats. Uh, Dependabot has 62 commits right now, and it was added in April of this year. He is on the third place because the packaging at the pharma is the automation. And the automation has, <laughs> in less than three months, did a bunch of work for us. But that is inflated because Boto from Amazon and GRPC IO from GoGo release weekly. So at least three packages update will be done by package. So it's going to be inflated. He's cheating here. Uh, we have 82 packages right now that are not using setup.py. They're using the PyProject install macro. And this number will keep growing as we move towards EL10. Uh, we want to ditch setup.py and don't use EGG anymore. We want the new this info metadata. And here I have one concern. That is the number of packages that we need each version of both. Uh, we are increasing in a pace that I don't like because from time to time we need to embrace more libs and embracing more libs is we can get more risk if someone attack the supply chain and if we could reduce the number of libs that we use would be amazing. And this is the plan for the next year that I have. Uh, we are going to move out of Jenkins go to a GitHub-centric uh, workflow. Uh, as much as I don't like being only on GitHub, 
but it's better for us to be there than going to Jenkins and other Jenkins, other Jenkins. So yeah, uh, go and add Dependabot workflow for the branched versions that we have, not only nightly. Uh, rebuild on top of Python 3.12. This is for EL10, so we can only support EL10 if we do that. Uh, and use rich dependencies as much as possible. Rich dependencies are a new feature, not that new, but it's a feature from EL9, and there's its own Fedora already, that you generate your dependencies on the build time. Uh, we will not stop adding the requires that we uh, we want, but generating the the dependencies that build for build and for running it's really good because it shows us sometimes that we are missing one dependency or that we are building the package with optional conditions that sometimes we might not want. So this is really good and. That's it. Questions, ideas. Oh, we still use copper to build, like we move it from Koji 100%. Yesterday, I did the branch for 3.63 from Nightly, and it took two hours to do the branch. It was really fast. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed it, but did you say what Python version you're building your packages with? 3.11 right now. Okay, cool. And you'll move to yeah. 3.12 in EL10, is that right, Odalon? Yeah, like when we, when we have the CentOS string 10 stable enough, not say, I don't say beta, but we're not going to build on beta because we build on top of rel build roots right now. So when the rel 10 build roots shows up on copper. I'm doing the rebuild. Okay. So I'll ask just for when you get a moment, you listed the number of packages. Um, if you can gather the um, the changes you see between those versions. I'd like to take a look at them. I think I know what those are, but I'm not positive. So when you get a moment, just drop me whatever the diffs are between 339, 49, and 63 from your point of view. OK, be great. I, I will take a look. Uh, I know that for 63, we started almost added the Kafka yeah. uh, requirement, but we dropped that yep. uh, because it was not necessary. But we still had to, like some packages, Let's say Python cryptography. You guys are on the latest version. And the latest version of Python cryptography changed the build system to right. something called mat mattering. And that mattering required three more packages and three more packages. And, and the list goes exploding right. like I hate dependency hell on Python. So yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Some of this is just are things that are difficult for us. Well, they're impossible literally for pulp to control uh, the transitive dependencies. Um, okay, thank you. Other questions, folks? I think it's interesting because you do, you're doing all your building in, in uh, copper. Soon, you'll be building pulp in copper, which will be running on pulp. And there's going to a certain amount of how long will it take between the time you build the RPMs to how long before copper is running the RPMs you just built in copper? Uh, should be interesting over the course of 2025 to see well, how that cycle works. Is copper going to use the PyPy version or they're going to use, they are going to package themselves? Do you know? I think they're using the Foreman's versions, but I can't recall. Daniel, do you remember? Or uh, actually, no, not Daniel. Um, anybody on the services side? Copper is using the hosted service. Right. Right. So that's what, that would be the uh, the PyPy versions. Yep. OK. Uh, never mind then. We're not using your RPMs for copper. All right. Other questions? Three. 
two, one. All right, Odalon, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to stop the recording here.